gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. Draw us forth to the table of life. Brothers and sisters, each of us called to walk in your light. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. We are parts of the body of Christ, needing each other, each of the gifts the Spirit provides. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. No more harm on the mountain of God. Swords into plowshares. Free us, O Lord, from hardness of heart. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. Wash us, Lord, in, in the waters, waters of life, waters of mercy, waters of hope that flow from your side. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in the gospel today, Jesus reads from the prophet Isaiah in the synagogue, and says, today these words are fulfilled in your hearing, to bring glad tidings to the poor, to free the captives. Each week, we are weighed down by sin in our lives, and we have this opportunity to begin again with the grace of Christ, which renews us, especially in Holy Communion. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, 
through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. The Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the most high Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father glory to God glory to God glory to God in the highest and on earth peace on earth peace to people of good will. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday. 
in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, his excellency, and Ezra, the priest's scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The decrees of the Lord are steadfast. They give wisdom to the simple. Your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. Your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, abiding forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are all of them just. Your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and life. May the spoken word of my mouth, the thoughts of my heart, Win favor in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it does not, for this reason, belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. Nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety. Whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now, you are Christ's body, and, individually, parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? The word of the Lord. sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And all the eyes, the eyes of all in the synagogue, looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. In this season of Christmas, we meditate on the incarnation, which in some way is a new creation. God himself comes to earth to restore what has been wounded and lost due to our sin. And the first reading is a parallel in the Old Testament, and that is the people are brought back from exile, from Babylon back to Jerusalem, and they are called to rebuild the temple that had been destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar. And as they rebuild the temple, they discover the book of the law, which is to say Deuteronomy. Over the years, they have lost track of the book of the law or really didn't pay attention to it very much. And uh, in the book of the law in Deuteronomy, the Lord says, there will be blessings for you if you keep the commandments but curses will fall upon you if you break them, if you turn to the worship of false gods. And so the first reading is, from, is the story of Ezra, uh, the priest, reading the book of Deuteronomy, the book of the law, to the people. And Nehemiah recounts to the people how God called them to be his people, peculiarly his own. And all the wonders he signs, he worked for them, like the parting of the Red Sea. And yet they were stiff-necked and refused to obey the Lord. They no longer remembered the miracles he performed. And on hearing this all, we see the people wept. In the in if you continue in the reading, they confessed their sins publicly and repented. They said, We will return to the Lord and his commandments. Do we ever weep for our sins? St. John Vianney, who is the patron saint of this parish and of parish priests, 
several times tried to leave the parish that he had been pastor of for most of his life to, he said, to do penance and to weep for his sins. The people prevented him from doing it each time, of course, but he had that desire in his soul. In the book of Revelation, John has a vision of God the Father seated on the throne, and in his hand is the scroll with writing on both sides. This refers to the book of the covenant, the book of Deuteronomy, because it was a scroll with writing on both sides. And it's sealed with seven seals. And it was asked, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? In other words, who has been faithful to the commandments of the Lord? And he goes on to write, no one was found worthy. I shed many tears because no one was found worthy to open the scroll. But the angel said, do not weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed, enabling him to open the scroll with its seven seals. This refers to Jesus. Jesus, upon coming into Jerusalem, coming over the hill and seeing the city laid before him in the last week of his life, began to weep over Jerusalem. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I have longed to gather you to myself like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you refused. It caused the Lord himself to shed tears and weep. In the incarnation, though all of humanity is not able to be holy and keeps God's commandments, there is one who can, and that is Jesus. He has never sinned, not even once. Jesus reveals to man what we are called to be. All that Jesus did, the miracles and the healings, and especially rising from the dead, he wishes for us as well. God became man so that man might become like God. St. Paul writes, It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. The Lord desires to not only forgive us our sins, but to give us the grace so that we can keep the commandments and do whatever he tells us. And this is through the sacraments, especially baptism, by which we are given the grace of the Holy Spirit in our soul, confirmation, by which we are given strengthening to give witness to the Holy Spirit, the grace of the sacrament of marriage, by which we are able to love one another with the love of the Holy Spirit, and the two sacraments that we can receive over and over again, confession and Holy Communion renews the spiritual life within us. In addition to sacraments, also prayer. Not just saying prayers, but talking and listening to God. Bringing to him all of our concerns and worries and asking for what we need. Several days into the illness that I had over Christmas, I began to get concerned about uh, not getting better. And I prayed in the chapel for the grace of healing. And uh, I was praying the liturgy of the hours. Normally I don't do the mid-afternoon prayer, but my eyes went to the reading for that day. And these were the words from the prophet Ezekiel. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, shepherding them rightly. The Lord answered my prayers. I know my plans for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not your woe, plans to give you a future full of hope. When you seek me with all your heart, you will find me with you, says the Lord. Now we may say, well, what about these other people? The Lord isn't revealing his plans for everyone else. It's his plans for you. He does have a plan for everyone else. 
but it's not for us to know all of those plans. Today is the 49th anniversary of the Supreme Court decision, Roe versus Wade, that legalized abortion. One of the crimes of the people of Israel that led to them being taken over by a foreign nation was worshiping false gods, including offering their children in sacrifice to these gods. And so we can examine our conscience today. How, in what way have I participated in the culture of death? Have I thought of children as a burden or an unwanted problem? Have I encouraged someone in abortion or said nothing when I should have spoken up? Have I voted for or supported politicians who favor legal abortion? Have I allowed hatred to grow in my heart? Have I wished someone was no longer around? Have I killed someone spiritually by harsh words of anger or lack of charity toward them? Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Let us say our prof uh, profession of faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord Jesus came to proclaim liberty to the captives and salvation to all. This gives us confidence to entrust to him all of our needs as we pray. That our Holy Father, Francis, our Bishop John, and all church leaders will continue to strengthen the faith of Catholics around the world, and especially in Latin America, as they lead the church today, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of our country and our community, that we may persevere in the work to achieve liberty and justice for all, especially the marginalized and forgotten, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to abortion and every form of injustice against human life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us here, that we may continue to share our time and gifts with this community, together building up the body of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That many young people will respond to Christ's call to follow him in the consecrated life and in the priesthood, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, particularly those on our parish prayer list, that God's healing love will restore the sick and protect the human family from the COVID virus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, especially Jerry Detterman and Martin Meyer, whom we remember at mass this weekend, that they may come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory in heavenly kingdom, we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. God of all, we call on you in our need. Pour out your grace upon us all as we continue the mission of your Son in the world today, serving the needy, proclaiming the good news, and bringing joy to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, 
You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Bless the Lord at all times. Praise shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord. For God has been so good to me. Take 
taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me, together let us all praise God's name. I called the Lord who answered me from all my troubles I was set free taste and see taste and see the goodness of the Lord the Lord is good. In God we need put all our trust. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the And see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. We have received the Lord in the Eucharist. We ask him to renew a spirit of joy in our hearts. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer chain members, your calendars are available to be picked up on the credenza in the library. St. John Vianney School fifth graders are hosting a fundraiser at the Fairmont Pizza Ranch on Monday. 
from 5 to 8 p.m. Part of the proceeds go to their class trip to the Eagle Bluff and the tips. Our St. John Vianney School dinner dance is coming up next Saturday. Uh, please uh, consider attending. And then also we have the KC raffle tickets that go along with it. Uh, they're still available. The uh, proceeds after the prizes go to support uh, the St. John Vianney School. We're thankful for the Knights of Columbus uh, for this important fundraiser for the school. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In Christ there is no east or west, in him no south or north, but one great family bound by love throughout the whole wide earth. In him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord close by. And disciples in the faith, whatever your race may be, who serve each other in Christ's love are surely kin to me. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north. All Christly souls are one in Him throughout the 